Good evening. What a great number that we have tonight. Everybody get your Bibles. Get your Bibles and turn to Matthew chapter number 7, and we'll begin at verse number 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7. Tonight we will be celebrating our seniors. We have seven that was on the board just a little bit that is graduating from high school, and we're going to get together in just a few minutes and, and honor them and celebrate them. And by the way, you uh, seven, listen to me, you graduating uh, seniors, check your mailbox. There are folks that are putting stuff in your mailboxes. And so on your way up the hill, grab your mailbox. Get some stuff out of your mailbox. And uh, if you say, well, I don't have time. i got to get up on the hill. Get somebody that you trust and get your mailbox emptied because there's things in there for you. So be sure to check your mailbox. We want to encourage you tonight. We're going to encourage you. There are several folks that are here tonight visiting with us. And by the way, you visitors, if you don't mind, I want to reiterate, uh, there's a card right in front of you. And it's a visitor card. We'd like for you to put your name on that card if you don't mind. If it's not right in front of you, ask one of our members. There's probably one stick somewhere on the bench. And fill out that card. We would love to have a record that you were here tonight so that we can acknowledge that and have that. So fill out, if you're a visitor, fill that card out and give it to somebody. Give it to your graduate if you'd like to do that. But uh, please, please, please do that because we love to honor our graduates tonight. We're about to do that in just a few short minutes. And for those of you visiting with us tonight, we have been talking about the Sermon on the Mount. We are going through the Sermon on the Mount, have been uh, for several weeks. And Jesus is talking to those folks, and this is a perfect night for you to be here and to honor your seniors because all of the Sermon on the Mount is so vital. It's been beating me up. I've been needing to grow, and Jesus has been helping me to grow throughout this sermon. But this portion of the Sermon on the Mount is certainly vital too. Very, very important. And so we're going to look, and it'll be good for you seniors because what we're trying to do is encourage you as seniors to follow after righteousness. And that's exactly what Jesus has been telling folks to do on this Sermon on the Mount. Seek God's righteousness. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, which is part of the Sermon on the Mount, verse number 33, he said, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you, such as food and clothing and so forth. So we need to seek the righteousness of God. And we've been looking at the righteousness in a variety of areas. And tonight, we're going to look at righteousness in relationships. When you go out in this whole world, young people, uh, and we're out in this world, very important to establish the right relationships and be righteous in those relationships. Our righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and scribes of Jesus' day because the way they dealt with their relationships uh, was for selfishness and how to promote themselves and they judged people and all these things. No, if you want to be in right relationship with God, then get your relationship righteousness in order and there's two things in this particular text that he says as far as our relationships number one Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 through 12 is what we're looking at tonight get your relationship right with God have the right relationship with God if we want to have this experience of life to not only matter in this life but prepare us for the life to come, then relationships are critical. And the relationship with God is essential. Get the right relationship with God. Include God in every aspect of your life. Look at verse number 7. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that asks, receives, and he that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened. Jesus is saying, include God in every aspect of your life. Let God be a part of your life. Engage with God. Why would we do that? Of course, this is a whole study on prayer, and we'll look at that more deeply in another occasion. But tonight, let's just put it into the 
our minds that as we go out in this world to develop the right relationship with God, we've got to engage God, engage Him in prayer for everything. If you're about to make a major decision about college, if you're going to make it about a career, if you're going to make it about marriage, about children, if you're going to make it about life in general, just if you're going to plant some tomatoes and hope that you have a good tomato crop, pray about that. Ask, seek, knock, engage God. Now, why would we do such a thing? Because God loves us. Look at verse number 9. What man is there of you or among you whom if his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? No. You love your kids. And if they are hungry and they ask for some food, ask for some bread, you wouldn't give them a rock and say, here, gnaw on that. You wouldn't do that. Why? Because you love them. Look at verse number 10. Or if he ask a fish, Daddy, give me a fish. Will he give him a serpent? Of course you wouldn't. If your little boy said, Daddy, please feed me. I'm hungry. Give me a fish. You wouldn't throw him a snake out there and say, gnaw on that thing? No. Why would you do that? You wouldn't do that. Why? Because the father loves the kid. Well, God is saying, engage me. Ask, seek, knock. Include me in every aspect of your life. Why? Because I love you. He goes on to say in verse 11, If you then know how to give, you know, and you're evil, you're, you're, you're evil, you're, you're base as humanity. If you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? If we will get the right relationship with God, engage God in every aspect of our lives, understanding that He loves us and He cares about what happens to us. Certainly He cares about what happens to us spiritually because He sent His only begotten Son in this world to die for us. How much love? We can't even imagine that kind of love. But He certainly cares for us physically too. Ask, seek, and knock. God will take care of us because He loves us. So, that's to develop the right relationship with God. Include God, engage God, love God, for He loves us. But the second is, right relationship with others. Look at verse number 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. We'll pause right there. Whatever you want people, others, to do to you, then you do it to them. Now, there's a key word there that started that off. Therefore. Therefore. Engage God. Seek God. Because God loves us and wants to do good things for us. Therefore. Because God wants to do good things for us and because God loves us, we should, therefore, love other folks. It's talking about love here. Do to other people what you would have them do to you. Not for self-gain. Not to say, well, you know, I'm going to do for him so he'll do it for me. No. It's because you love them. It is, love is the motivator here. God will engage and treat people with us a certain way because he loves us. We should treat other people a certain way because we love them. How do I know he's talking about love here? Well, the last part of verse number 12. For this is the law and the prophets. That sounds familiar. Because in Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is going to say this later. Beginning in verse number 36 through 40, this guy comes up and says, Master, talking to Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Tell us. And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all the heart, with all the soul, and with all thy mind. That's the first commandment. And the second is likened unto it. What? Thou shalt love thy neighbor, others, as yourself. And then Jesus makes a remarkable, a remarkable statement that is it's worthy to, to, to contemplate on these two. Having the right relationship with God, which is based on love. 
Having a right relationship with others, which is based on love. On these two, love God, love others, hang all the law and the prophets. Whatever's in the law, the thou shalt's and the thou shalt nots, and all the prophets, all their wisdom, everything that they tell us about God and how to live life, how to, how to navigate this old world that we're in, everything hangs on that. Everything hangs on our relationship with God and our relationship with others. We call this verse, verse number 12, what class? The golden rule. If there's any rule that you have to navigate your life, the golden rule is a good rule to have. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Good rule. A lot of people live by the silver, silver rule. There's the golden rule, and then there's the silver rule. What's the silver rule? I can't even say that. What's the silver rule? Do unto others... As they do to you. The golden road, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Silver, do unto others as they do to you. Or another view of the silver rule is don't do to others what they don't do to you. If they don't steal from you, don't steal from them. If they don't punch you in the nose, don't punch them in the nose. Don't do to other people what they don't do to you. And that'll make you be a kind of happy person. You go through life, your, your relationship with others is you're not bothering them. They don't bother you. That's the silver rule. Then there's that iron rule. A lot of people live by that one. And basically it says do to others before they get a chance to do it to you. <laughs> do, it, do unto others because you can. Might makes what, class? Right. Might makes right. Because you're powerful. Because you have all the money. Because you have all the influence. Because you have everything that you can, that you can get away with it. Just go out there and treat people the way you want, them, want to treat them. That's the iron rule. Here's a problem with that. See, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do to you, takes action. you got to do something to others as you would have them do to you. If you are sick and you would have others to help you, then you go do that for others, even though you're not sick. If you're in a trouble and, and you would have people help you out of trouble, then you go take the affirming, affirming action. You, you just get out there and help others because you would have them help you if you were in that same circumstance. That requires the right action. With a silver rule, it requires no action. Don't do it to them if they don't do it to you. No action. No interaction. And the iron rule is flat out the wrong action to hurt people, to harm people. So we either have the choice of doing the wrong thing or doing no thing or doing the right thing. And the golden rule is all about just doing the right thing. And this is the right thing, class. God's plan of salvation. We put this on the board every time for those of you visiting with us to remind us that these verses are in the Bible. And these verses are something that God wants us to, to be aware of because he wants all of us to go to heaven. We're like his children. And he wants to do good things for us. He certainly wants us to go to heaven. And he tells us to hear the word of God because faith comes from hearing. And hearing comes from the word of God. So listen to the word of God. It'll birth faith in you. And when that faith comes, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he he wants you to have this faith. So believe it, birth that faith, and repent of your sins. Because if you don't repent, you'll all likewise perish. And God doesn't want anybody to perish and confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Confess your sins. If you confess your sins before men, you know, that's what God wants us to do. Humble ourselves and, re and repent of our sins. Uh, confess our sins and be baptized for the remission of those sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And then live faithfully. Be thou faithful unto death. You see... This is a plan that God has put together because he loves us. He cares about us. But it takes action. We could sit here with no action. So I'm not going to do any of that. I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to believe it. I'm not going to repent. I'm not going to confess Jesus. I'm going to confess my sins for sure. And I'm certainly not going to be baptized. And I'm not going to live faithfully. 
What kind of rule is that to live? You certainly won't develop a relationship with God. You won't develop a right relationship with others even. And then you could just say, look, I hate that. I'm, I, not only am I not going to take any action, I'm going to actually preach against it. I'm going to tell people they don't have to believe. I want to tell people they don't need to repent of their sins. They don't need to confess to each other. They don't need to be baptized. They don't need to live faithful. And I'm going to take the iron rule approach. Take the golden rule approach. Do what God wants you to do. And tonight, we want you to obey the gospel. Now, we have the baptistries ready. It's all warm. and We've got baptistry clothes all set up. You come forward. We will uh, ask you to confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God after, of course, you repent of your sins and, and, and you express your faith by coming forward. And then we'll take you back in the back and we'll baptize you right here, right now. And then when you come up out of that water, God will add you to the church. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. That's what the Bible says. And then you walk out of here added to the church that Jesus died for. Somebody said, well, you know what? I did all of that, and I am a member of the church, but unfortunately, over life, I haven't developed my relationship with God at all. I don't go to church anymore. I don't pray. I don't read the Bible. I don't, I don't engage with others. And when I do engage with others, I... I've been exercising the iron rule from time to time, and the silver rule most of the time certainly don't exercise the golden rule. You might want to come forward and admit that, confess that. And if you confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, God is faithful, God is just, he'll forgive you. You can come forward, we'll pray for you. Now, we got plenty of time. We're going to meet with our seniors in just a few moments, uh, around about 7 o'clock. It's only 6.30. So if you know that you need to obey the gospel, be baptized tonight. We've got time. You've been thinking about it for a while. Why don't you do it? And you've been thinking about confessing your sins. You've been a Christian for five years, and you have never come forward. What does that mean? I don't know. Maybe you don't need to. You've been a Christian for 15 years. You've never walked the aisle. You've never confessed that you have exercised the iron rule too many times, and it's brought a shame and reproach on the church. You've been a Christian for 50 years and you've never walked the aisle, so you've never, you've always done the golden rule, right? You know, I don't know. Maybe you don't need to exercise this opportunity to come forward. But if you do, why not now? While together we stand and sing.